the Shout Loud podcast, bringing the artists you love onto your headphones. Welcome to the new Shout Loud podcast. Today we're sitting here with Press Tomiko in Frankfurt. Hi guys, how's it going? Hello. Hello. It's good. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so we only have one microphone today, so we're going to be passing around the microphone. Um, you're halfway through the tour with uh, Starset and Shinedown. How has it been so far? It's been amazing. It's been really, really good. Like all, even um, all the crowds have been super, super responsive, and you never know what you're going into being the opening band. And like, you know, like um, you know, typically we'd be like you said, build with bands like Arcane Roots. So Shine Down's a slightly different kind of rock to what we typically play with. So you never know if you're going to be well received or if it's not going to be people's thing or stuff. But they, they, all their fans have been so receptive of us, and you know, we've been quite humbled this tour. It's just been awesome. Sorry, nothing to add, really. It's been great, yeah. <laughs> no problem. So um, let's talk about your new record straight away. You released "Here's to the Fatigue" this year, yes. I think. Yes, and uh, it's safe to say it's a brilliant record, in my opinion. Thank so con congratulations on that. Um, I feel like this album explores new musical territory for you you had a much heavier side in the past if i'm getting that correctly um and it seems like you put more emphasis on melodies and vocal harmonies even more so than before yeah. do you think that is true or what were your developments for this new record um, i think it wasn't necessarily a conscious effort but i think but i mean i don't know if heavy is the right word but like i think we've lost a slight bit of scattiness mm -hmm. I think which the first album had it was quite like jagged in places and you know like more mathy you know we're gonna go down genres but I think we there wasn't a conscious decision to trim the fat on that stuff it was just naturally we found ourselves refining it you know where it probably needed to be refined anyways or or where we wanted it to be anyway so it's just we just wanted to write better songs yeah I think we um We also kind of just like have improved upon like keeping a consistent vibe throughout mm -hmm. a song as well, yeah. rather than kind of, you know, chopping and changes and having three different parts that could belong to three different songs. We've found our flow a bit more within, you know, yeah, song by song basis. But um, we enjoyed writing it, man. We, you know, the first album was a lot of pressure and, you know, we put a lot of stress on ourselves and you learn a lot. Each time you do a record, you, three months later, you go, oh, I want to change this, I want to change that. But yeah, so we actually had a lot more fun writing this and yeah, we, we're proud of it. Yeah. Great. So uh, were there any specific events that shaped the record? Events? Um, I don't think there was any specific events. Um, I think it's just like in terms of like lyric wise a lot of it's just growing up and kind of coming to terms with the world around you and people in general um and yeah in terms of actual writing we you know we knew we wanted to still be presto Mico, you know still do a similar thing just try and make it a bit better um Yeah, and we got to go out to Texas to record it, um, Austin, Texas, with a guy called Machine, who's a great producer. Um, so that was great because you're just in a creative space. You know, we were out in the countryside overlooking a creek. We'd go out in the morning, we'd cook our burgers out on the grill. There was an outside shower and you, you can watch all the vultures flying around. And yeah, it was just like a good place to go get lost for a month and, and be in a creative place. Yeah. Nice. Uh, would you say that there was a specific theme um, throughout the record, like um, certain type of content? I mean, because like, like Lewis said, it's just it's you know we don't have any sort of political agenda, and Lewis is the lyricist of the band, and it's I think the the thing that's most relatable and you know I can relate to through Lewis lyrics is just it, it's it's people stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's stuff yeah. you will go through, and it's stuff. It's just one person's perception of stuff that everyone's experiencing, and um, whether you perceive it exactly how it's been scripted on a piece of paper, or if you take your own meaning from it, um, you know, so be it. But I think, you know, I, I, I don't think we've got like a particular agenda that we're ever trying to push through, you know, premise or anything. Um, I recently watched the video for If All Your Parts Don't Make yeah. a Whole, and it's about social media mostly and self-portrayal. Do you want to comment on yeah. the, the content or what the song's about? I was just going to say, I think with, just with that video, like um, that was just a, a good way of 
of um, sort of showing kind of the idea of the song. I'll let Lewis talk more about the actual meaning of it. Yeah, um, I think it was like, because that song as a whole is just kind of about the feeling you have, you know, when, you, when you're a teenager and it's like you look at yourself and you're, you're fucking up all the time and you go, what's, what's wrong with me? Um, and it's like that, I think we found kind of like the whole social media thing, just because that was quite a thing that we were becoming aware of anyway at that time. And that was a, just a good kind of concept to put to this song. Because, um, you know, we've, we've all been affected by, you know, we're, we're trying to be productive at home writing songs and stuff, and we're getting lost in a, a bit of a weird digital space. Um, but yeah, um, I, we just thought it kind of, it fit well with the theme as, as just uh, a bit of a side note conceptually to yeah. the song. It's just a good way of portraying the idea of the song. Do you know what I mean? Even though it wasn't necessarily written or based exactly on that specific topic, like social media, it was more. It was just that encompassed it quite nicely. So, so what are your what's your general opinion on social media and being a band nowadays? How important is it, and how much do you think a band has to rely on social media? Did you hear about the recent case? Of, I, about the tour. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm uh, going to talk about a specific event that happened recently where a band staged a fake fan base and yeah, a fake it, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They called the the Theatin or the Theatin Theatrin whatever. Yeah, couple of days, so it would have been easy to miss it. But um, I mean, f to be it's social media now is a necessary evil, and it's like you've got to be hustling and you've got to be on it and you've got to be doing all the right things because you know Lewis said the other day it's. Like like people if you're not shoving yourself in people's faces people are so quick to forget because there's a million other bands shoving themselves in people's faces taking that spot so you've got to tick all the boxes and I mean like I can't I can't really help but respect you know like what they've done because it's like yeah. why not do you know what I mean there's no rules to it anymore why not fake your own thing and go and play a bunch of shows and, it, and now I saw Louder are posting about it now and they're like here's an article on the most talked about tour of the year and it's like There's there's no rules, do you know what I mean? Just make your noise, hustle the game, do you know what I mean? And do it however you want. I still think there's a lot to be said, though. If, like, if you can do all that work, but if you haven't been out and you haven't played the shows and talked to the fans and, you know, been around the merch and got to know people, you're still going to fall flat. Even You could do all the promotion you want on the internet, but I think if unless you've got the, the weighted product there and you're going to go and play it and people can see the substance, I think... There's no point in having any social media. You can do what you want on there, but if you can't, if you can't cut the cake, you can't cut the cake. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's just, you know, people also like to be connected with their artists a lot more these days as well. Um, and you know, to what extent you want that connection is is up to the band themselves. But even just kind of like seeing what the band are doing. You know, seeing that a band are active helps just the fan base stay engaged because there are there are a lot of bands who maybe they're not your favorite band, but they drop off for a bit, and then three months later you go, oh yeah, what happened to them? And it's you know they could have been doing stuff the whole time, but because they weren't necessarily posting it out, they weren't actually yeah staying engaged with people. You find that even like a few months after a band's released an album, sometimes yeah. you know it's like just because they didn't release the album and we're just like Wah! it's like yeah. oh yeah they released an album I forgot they released an album this year. Do you know what I mean? It's it's crazy. I mean it's it's just <clears throat> it's as much part of the game as everything else now, and it's just it's a tool to make sure you get out there. Yeah. I think that's a very valid point, especially if you consider how sure people remember albums for and that just an album doesn't have the same longevity as it is uh, say two decades ago where you would release something and you could tour that record for three or four years and everybody would have been fine with it but nowadays a year passes and you're like oh I want a new single by this band they're not doing anything so I move on to something else well, it's like we were um, we played with one of our favorite festivals called 2000 Trees Festival and one, lovely uh, you know you've been there no I wanted to go there this year but I didn't have the money We, I think all of me and my friends yeah, wanted to go there it's like, it's like our but, favorite festival to play in and, um, but yeah and one, you know, it's, it was a typical question where it's just like you know what's what's been your favorite album so far and you know you're put on the spot and you, you're like oh yeah um this one and then as soon as you walk away you're like oh this came out this year oh, i forgot about that and it's, it's exactly what you're saying right? it's just like it's so easy to forget albums have come out even a few months ago it's why you need all the you know all the waves and all the all the hype behind it 
so make sure people don't forget i think i think the the good thing is we we're still we're still like in a lifestyle band genre like we're still lifestyle music and and so if if you do have kind of like those fans who really you know get into it and they 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 dig the whole thing then you know people still do stay attached you know we've got bands that we still listen to from early 2000s you know bands like system of a down and everything so that is the one blessing of our kind of music scene it is it's not just it's played on the radio for a week and then it's like oh that song's old now yeah. and you need the next thing we you know we are lifestyle music and yeah i think it's that's the, that's the good part of it yeah yeah yeah, nice. So let's talk a bit about the production of the new record. Yeah. In in my opinion, it was a huge step up in terms of how the instruments sounded and how everything was is set in the mix. So it all sits sits very well. So um, we we went and recorded it with a, a guy called Machine. Who uh, yeah. do you know this producer? No, you will know his back catalog. So like Lamb of God, Ashes oh. to Wake, Every Time I Die, yeah. Fallout Boy, Clutch. It's just like he his his back catalog's unreal. And um, so we we actually met him through uh, the label head of the label we released our first album on called Good Intent um, they were called Best Before Records and Anthony and Machine who's a producer they were like best friends and grew up in Jersey <laughs> together and um, I remember when we were putting the demos together for the next album Anthony was still very much involved and he, he was just like let me play this to Machine well, I think he'll dig it and um, yeah one thing led to another Machine loved it and then next thing we knew he you know, he just wanted to do it and we managed to make it happen and um, yeah we were, next thing we knew we were flying over to Texas to record it but we, we just we were so attracted to his whole ethos of producing because all of his records sound different you know there, there's a lot of producers um, you know, not pointing any fingers, but there's a lot of producers now where they've very much got a stamp or a template where it's like you can tell a lot of these mm -hmm. bands have gone to the same producer and because they've all got this this drum sound, they've all got this, you know, compression, or whatever. And um, all of his records sounded like the bands rather than a producer. And, uh, you know, one, one Skype call later, it, it, everything about the way he feels about music was aligned with us and all the things he loved about our band that we love all the quirks all the harmonies all the hooks it's like he just wanted to have more of that and emphasize it so yeah he he was just working with him was just like amazing so good does anybody else have something to comment I think one one really great thing about machine as well is his energy so you could all be like getting into the studio in the morning a bit like like out of it a bit like oh a bit tired and he would just be like come on in guys let's yeah. go and he'd be like come on and everyone's getting in the energy and like everyone's in the same place yeah. in that really good working environment yeah. um he's he just knows how to bring the best out of the band he finds the bits that make the band what they are mm. and he pulls them up and like amplifies them and just it's really good for making a record yeah we've, uh, we've got a good bit of footage from when we were tracking one of the songs and it's 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 got us in shot and we're you know we're playing the song we're playing the song and he walks in frame holding his massive dog and he's just dancing <laughs> with his dog in his arms his <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like it's a big dog you know <laughs> he's got it on his arms and he's just dancing with him it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's just good energy you know he's, he's we've said it before but he's the type of guy who like if you know if you've got one of those friends who kind of cares a bit too much about what people think about him and you know can never really let loose like they need to spend some time with a machine and just, yeah, lose your inhibitions. Yeah. Sounds, sounds very interesting, definitely. Um, let's speak about the vocal arrangements on the new record or the arrangements in general. Who writes them and how do you compose them? Are you influenced by classical music much or what is yeah, your go-to? We're, we're pretty influenced by everything. I know that's... That's almost like a pretentious thing to say, like, oh, I'm influenced by it. But it's like we, we, listen, we, just, we listen to absolutely everything. And you know, I've said it before, it's like I feel like if you're open to stuff, then you'll always find the things you like in music in any genre, you know, because it's all there. It's just packaged up differently. And, um, yeah, and I think that definitely has had a reflection on our vocals. But I don't think there's a, necessarily a direct influence that we we draw from all the time it's more it's more i think you know when i'm putting a structure together or something or we're jamming an idea it's much more like um section by section hello, hello we're interviewing all right that's our manager growing but it's much more like um 
section by section so or like just a little feel or a riff and it's like oh i loved him when this band just did this three seconds and then that might inspire a whole riff or you know um and regarding arrangements it, it's pretty split like um you know I'll, I'll pull together like a demo or something but then a lot of the arrangements and melodies will come from when lewis has put lyrics on them like lewis might come back with something different it's like well this is way better do you know what i mean so and then a lot of it is just singing through it and see what actually sounds good and it's it's something that we've honed as we've gone on because it's like you know I remember this band started and it was just like a three part harmony would plaster everything and I feel like we've become much better especially on the last album at knowing when there just needs to be one voice or an octave or a harmony or three harmonies or a gang you know it's, it's you've got all these different colours and you can't just paint everything in red do you know what I mean it's like you know use them all yeah, but but I feel that, that that's what truly sets you apart from other bands, yeah. um, sound-wise, because I've personally never heard of any other project that mixes this classic sound, so to speak, yeah. with the heavy guitars and everything else that's going on. I mean, in regards to the actual the the premise of the band, like I think you know it, it was something that we always wanted to do early on and like when I was younger I always liked the idea of having more than one vocalist in bands because you know, I like Lewis said we, I love bands like System of a Down and they were always like you know Darren and Serge and it was like mm -hmm. a constant joy and I just thought that's so cool and like ping pong yeah exactly and it, and and you you had such a, a crazy contrast in just like the tone and vibe if one of them sang this bit instead of the other one and it's weird because we've been saying it a lot on this tour but it's like you know, it's something so common with like boy and girl bands in the pop world where like everyone will take a verse and this verse has this kind of flavour to it and you know I, I like the fact that you know not many people have done it in rock and it was just something that we we liked and hopefully people think it works it's probably you know it's probably some people it's probably not their thing but it's just we we liked it you know yeah so I have a bold question to to ask so to speak drum roll um, do you think or what do you believe is the reason for the rise in three piece bands in recent years because I feel like we have seen many nice projects emerge uh, from like just out of nowhere for example Arcan Roots mm -hmm. Rest in peace, by the way. Awesome band. Uh, but, um, yeah, Press to Miko, then there's others to name. I mean, um, I mean Biffy. Got a, Biffy Clyro, Biffy one of the big ones. Got been a huge part yeah. in that. But um, I, I feel like one... <laughs> I've, n I've never even thought about this until right now. But one factor is um, bands are hard to just, like, keep together in general. Um, and, you know, I actually, you know, we've, we've, had, we've met bands where they did have more members and then like maybe the bassist left so then the guitarist jumped on bass and they just stayed with the three piece or whatever but yeah i don't know maybe that's partly of it you know just everyone's struggling for money it's, it's hard to find three guys to that are as passionate about this that they can take the hit in all the other parts of their life so you know maybe that's just getting harder and harder to do with even more members. So, so it's like the, the, the easiest way to survive as a band is to not have a band and have as little members as possible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but maybe it's that, but um, yeah, no, I think Louis, I think that is a huge part of it, to be honest. But obviously bands like Biffy, you know, they're, they're, they, they're kind of making three pieces cool again, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, mm. even though there's five of them on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was basically it. And I'm just going to ask you what the plans are for the band after this tour. Do you have anything set in stone yet? Yeah, um, we have just recorded a few weeks ago um, an acoustic EP. We Ooh. we rearranged a load of our songs um, and we also did a cover as well. Um, so we've recorded that. We're going to get it out uh, probably February next year um, with some, you know, we'll release some videos before that of it as well. Um, and we're also going to do a tour to back that up as well which will be fun because you know we've never done anything like this properly we've done acoustic sets but not proper full-on tour so that'll be good um other than that it's just we'll we'll start getting on you know when we get home i'm i'm gonna play the new spider-man game um <laughs> and we'll do christmas and then we'll we'll start writing again
yeah. try and you know nice. get album three done are you are you planning on coming back to germany for the next album cycle nah, on nah. never nah. really shit too crowd many, <laughs> many interviews. Too too many interviews. Yeah. <laughs> no like um, we've, everyone we've been meeting at the shows we, we're we're 100 intent on coming back next year i mean hopefully it'll be on another support or maybe at the back end of next year we might come back on our own depending on how things are going but basically lots of touring and a new album is in the works yeah Great, we're excited. Being a band. <laughs> we're going to carry on being a band for a couple more years. That sounds good, definitely. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to the new year and everything that you'll present us with, for example, the acoustic album. And thanks again for the interview. Thank you. Thank Have a nice you. evening. Thank Bye. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you'd like to stay informed about your favorite artists, then go check us out on our website or social media. The links are in the description box. Cheers and until next time.